I need a grave digger. Hi, Scizorin here with another league starter for the upcoming 324 Necropolis League. And this, you might have guessed it, it is Detonate Dead. This is a collab with I'm Exile, who has made a guide for what is most likely the strongest starter of this league. This is Detonate Dead of Cheney. It's incredibly strong. This is something we see often in events like Gauntlet when they're not banned. We see this very often for pushing for early Ubers. It is a very hardcore focused build. It's incredibly tanky, crazy clear speed if you do want to rush to level 100. Not without downsides though, because you know, it is a two button skill. You will have to do Desecrate and DD, etc. So that comes with some heartache. But as we do with our collabs, we are going to start with having Excel explain a little bit about how the build plays and then a segment on how different it is in bossing. If this build guide helps you have a great league start, please consider subscribing. It helps me and my team out a lot. Hey guys, what can I say? Another league, another detonate that build. At least this time around, we're going to be using the transfigured version on a necromancer for a more hit based play style. So essentially the way that this transfigure gem works is you will cast your desecrate and then when you cast detonate dead it essentially works very similarly to ball detonate dead except we can spam it so we're spamming it uh, over and over to create like a big chaining detonate corpses kind of effect. Um, it is a two button build so you're going to go through the map and cast desecrate and cast detonate dead pretty much every pack. Um, you do press the two buttons a lot, so if you're not a fan of uh, two button builds, I would highly suggest looking elsewhere because you're you're going to be pressing desecrate a lot. You're going to be pressing detonate dead a lot. Uh, that's just how the build works. Um, I will say it, the fact that it does leave a nice lingering effect behind makes it so clearing is uh, a lot easier because it's blowing up some corpses behind you. And thanks to, thanks to a trigger weapon, our curses are automated and our offering is automated. Until you have that, you, you are pressing a bit more buttons though. But you should be able to get an offering weapon pretty early on in maps. And then uh, and then you won't have to worry about that stuff. And we are also pressing our haste aura every 15-16 seconds or so, just to maintain the uptime on that. I did want to put in a Hydra map so you guys could get a little bit of an idea of what a Guardian rotation may or may not look like. Uh, if you did one. So I just Alk and Goad this. On actual boss bossing, we use an Arcanist brand to cast our Desecrate, but you don't really want to swap that in every boss of map, so... For this kind of boss, we're just casting Desecrate and Detonate Dead. Alternating between the two buttons, just kind of spamming them over and over again. Uh, until the boss starts. And we're pretty tanky so we can stand in a lot of things and not have to worry about it and just continue casting. And boss stop. It does have a little bit of a ramp up effect to get the corpse explosions going, to get the cast speed going, but uh, it does gets the job done. And uh, yeah, that's now we get to the bossing portion. So the big thing we want to change out here is we want to add Arcanist Brand in our Desecrate links. Normally this would be a 4 link. And then we also want to swap out our Grace. You want your Grace gem to have a white socket. And then you can swap it out for, you know, Purity of Fire, Purity of Ice, Purity of Lightning. For whichever boss fight you're doing. Uh, so that you can get a bit more defense. Um, so essentially the playstyle becomes we no longer cast the Desecrate. Our Brand does. So we apply a Brand every 4 seconds. And other than that, we just try to press right click as much as we can to get a bunch of damage out. And yeah, so I'll show you guys the start of an Uber Shaper here. Um, we do want to maintain our uptime on our Scorch from Boots as much as we can. This is a hard fight to, you know, maintain a lot of uptime. But luckily for us, we can tank the balls pretty easily, especially when we have Molten Shell up. So we're going to try to use that to our advantage when he casts that to get as much damage as possible. We can't take the slam, unfortunately. That just kind of is what it is. Um, for our multi-hit defense, we have Bone Offering. Um, we have Molten Shell. Uh, we are using Defiance of Destiny. So we have pretty good multi-hit defense versus stuff like this. D-Gen, we have Lethe Shade. Um, we're not going to really be able to like stand in Shaper Beam or anything. Nothing crazy. But for now, we're waiting for him to cast Balls, ideally. And then we're just going to hold right click. This is a decent spot to do it. It's a hard fight to maintain, like, really, really good uptime. 
um, when you're playing a non-dot base build, I will say that. Anytime he does a beam, you can just put the brand up, detonate dead. Your mission phase again. I'll go through one more of these, just to give you guys an idea. Our bone offerings up, we're pretty chillin' versus these hits. Yeah, we put, put the brand up, hold right click again. He's gonna probably slam here, dodge the slam, and then we should be able to face him after this by just standing in his clone's balls. Not really managing the degens well, but that's just one phase just to give you an example. So as you can see, the play style is not as good as Ignite, but it still gets the job done, especially if you're tanky enough to stand still and hold right click. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's some of the bossing. So there you have it. A lot of cool things from Exile there. This is a build that he knows inside and out. He's actually going to be playing a cast on crit version of DD on an Inquisitor, so it's a bit of a different build. But he will be live so much at League Starts. You can drop by his channel, ask him loads of questions about DD, and he's more than happy to help. And there will be loads of people in his community that will help you as well. So if you do run into any problems, that is great. Now, this is such a strong powerhouse of a build, so I do recommend it quite a lot. And we have a lot of different League starters if you want to try something else. DD isn't for everybody because of its two-button playstyle, so a lot of different choices here. So this is just an insanely strong build, and you will see a lot of streamers playing this, so that might put some of you off playing it. A lot of people don't want to play something that so many people are playing. However, this is a build that is very like solo self and viable. It's not something where you need uh, a lot of uniques or anything like that. So we are going to be using path of building. For those that are unfamiliar with POB, we do have a video going over how that works. And Excel has put so much effort here into making it step by step, very easy to follow. So you can see exactly where you're going to be um, taking points at different places. Here you can see that there's a respec around level 70, so you will um, get a lot of regrets from the campaign quests and stuff like that, and you might have to eat a few... I don't think you have to eat any. It does look like less than like 14 or something. But either way, you will be moving out to the right there, and you see the um, ascendancy things are in here as well with a normal lab, crew lab, etc. And obviously the Plaguebringer and Corpsefect nodes are very important. There is different endgame trees as well. So this is with like attributes being solved on gear. This is with, um, for example, if you need to take attributes on the skill tree. And then you have uh, before you get a cluster, like early on, especially if you're still cell phone, getting a cluster can be a pain. And here we have the endgame cluster plus the oscillating cluster, or sorry, the scepter, which we'll cover in a bit. In the skills, there are different ones here. So here we're starting out leveling with rolling magma from early on. It's very comfortable and easy. And uh, then at level 28, you switch to crema and armageddon run. So at this point, you need to use desecrate and... Armor Brand is so nice, you're mostly only using Cremation for bosses, but you probably will notice that some rares will be tanky enough that you might have to use Cremation. Then here, you usually switch to DD at the start of maps. Honestly, I've sometimes personally kept Armageddon Brand until tier 5 maps or tier 6 maps, just because right-clicking and not having to use Desecrate is so nice, but most people do switch at the start of maps, and that is what's recommended. You might have to do Normal Lab or Merc Lab to get a Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction. Personally, for my transfer your gems, I do normally spam normal lab, and that's been pretty okay. But uh, you do get more options in Merc Lab, and you get more things like gem XP, etc., that you can pound into the gem. And then there's a different setup here for late game. Once you start having like a little bit more um, budget, you want awaken gems, etc. Obviously, we're not starting out with awaken gems, and uh, all the league starters we do make sure work with like very basic gear. So you can see XL here has done. Very basic setup with what you want early. It's just life and resist on everything. Super easy to follow. Here is a full set of different level uniques that would be good. You don't want any leveling unique weapons. If this is all you have early, you could still be mapping and this will probably get you up to yellow maps. Um, especially on hardcore, we do generally recommend having like 100% suppression, etc. for red maps. So this is an example of day one to two gear. You can see here they have trigger a socketed spell when you use this skill. Other than that, it's just a basic shrieking essence of fear, um, and you try to get cast speed. Other than that, all the gear, very easy to follow. Here you see that we are starting to do suppression, and you're starting to see things like effect of non-damaging ailments, because you want higher chill and shock. We're getting that from, um, we see on this one, enemies near your corpses you spawned recently are chilled and shocked, and that is affected by your um, non-effect ailment stuff. So very, very good there. Here we have Eldritch Battery. If you aren't familiar on how that works, it, start using, it converts your energy shield to mana, basically. It, it 
puts it over the mana bar and you're now using your energy shield to cast, which is really nice. Um, you might need some ES on gear. You can see we have like an ES shield here, um, a Saintly chain mail here. So the bases are very like specifically picked and the mud on the belt here is pretty imperative for actually casting with EB. Regen 150 while near a rare or unique. So when you're actually gonna have to spam cast a little bit, this will keep your ES, which in this case now is your mana topped off. So here on the uh, non oscillating scepter, it's uh, basically what you get before the heist scepter. These are from heist, uh, so you will need to run grand heists. And generally, you are heavily incentivized to run the 83 ones because there are some things that have item levels. Can't remember if this one does, but also um, some of the 83 ones can drop the really expensive amulets. Um, you do want to try to go for as much fractured suppression as you absolutely can. If you're on solo cell phone, this is obviously very rough and crafting gear is going to be a lot harder. Essence spamming and rog, etc. is generally what you're looking at, but you very likely will not be able to get tier 1 suppression on everything. Here we see the full endgame setup and with everything and uh, everything in like the endgame area, this is fairly uh, decent investment. You do have 10 million damage. DD, obviously not a build that's known for its insane amount of damage, but he gets access to so many different levels of tank. We see that we have a fourth WoW and a Defiance of Destiny, and I'll explain those items now. If you're unfamiliar with the Defiance of Destiny, if something doesn't outright kill you, it pretty much you pretty much can't die. Um, lastly, you might have seen people were face tanking like thousands of monsters using a Defiance of Destiny, and that's because anything that basically, unless it two shots you with like really really big hits or one shots you it is almost impossible to die with this amulet because you start gaining 39 percent of missing unrestored life before being hit by an enemy so if you're missing life and you're about to take a hit it heals you as you're about to take that damage so this is insanely strong um definitely one of the strongest items in the game we don't know or think that they've changed the rarity of this item yet so it does end up being expensive, but not like priceless. Fourth bow, a little bit more common. And the way this works is armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. Now this is very strong because we're using an item called glorious vanity. And what that does is it turns this into divine flesh. Um, divine flesh is all damage taken bypasses energy shield. We don't care about that anyway, because we're using Eldritch battery and 50% of your elder damage is taken as chaos and plus five maximum chaos risk. So you can see here that we have 80% chaos. Now there's a few reasons why this is good. Obviously we're now taking half of our elemental damage uh, against armor. And since it's half, like a smaller amount is good for armor because armor is the smaller the number, the better armor is. So it's sort of like, doubly good. We also obviously have the 80% chaos risk instead of 75. Now another really good thing about fourth vow and using the glorious vanity of Sabakwa is that if anything penetrates, it penetrates against that resist. So let's take the shaper balls for example. This will offer an insane amount of protection because you're no longer taking the full amount of damage on just cold. A lot of the damage will be taken as chaos as well and the cold penetration can't do any extra damage to the chaos. Very strong for stuff like that. Other than that, Watcher's Eye, very strong. We do want physical damage reduction. That is a little bit of a weak point of the build. So getting that would be huge. Just having it for as well obviously makes like any chaos damage from hits so much less scary. So like red altars and stuff like that with, uh, you know, being able to take fists as extra chaos becomes a lot less scary when um, you do have this. It's still a scary mod though but uh, a lot less scary. So Chaos Summer should be a lot less of an issue. You can see here that your Chaos Max Hit is 80,000. Your LA Max Hit is 57, and your Fist Max Hit is only 26. I can't remember if Molten Shell is on here. It is not. So very tanky build. Definitely just an insane starter. There's a reason you hear so many streamers say they're going to play to set themselves up for a good league. Energized armor is really strong here. Obviously, we don't need, for example, the uh, increased energy shield here. And what that does, it does give you 20% increased armor, but also it will, um, like, this will be um, a lot more armor. So it, it's applied as armor at 200% of their value. And you can see here in the build that we have 50,000 armor. And even just taking out this, like, it is giving you 12,000 armor just from that one jewel slot. So. Quite nice, quite a lot of armor. And that will really, really help for the fourth WoW and that interaction. Now, another thing that Excel did for the crafting is you can hover over the items and literally pay attention to the name of the item. That's not what it's called. This is basically crafting tips for each piece. Excel also did a really good job putting loads of information in the notes. So if you check this out, loads of frequently asked questions, 
And obviously lately there's been a lot of questions about specters and how that works. So Exile, I see here that there's several specters listed. Can you walk us through how do we use specters in this build? So having specters is important for this build because it dilutes your pool with higher HP corpses, which makes your, your detonate dead deal more damage. So initially we start by having one specter. So you put in like a level one raised specter gem and you get a Kataba Herald from Act 10. And then all you have to do is raise it as a specter uh, and, then, and then remove the gem and you're good. I usually press desecrate in my head out just to make sure. Um, and then later down the line, when you can get the uniques that allow you to raise your specter limit, you want to move up to five specters so that further dilutes the corpse pool with higher HP corpses, which allow you to deal, um, deal more damage. Another thing that is important is you do need to have a level to desecrate so the corpses actually have a good level as well. Uh, so early on when you're moving into your early map progression, you really want to make sure you have enough energy shield to not only cast your Divine Blessing, but to be casting your... Uh, because you're spamming Desecrate and Detonate Dead, you really need a lot of ES to keep that going. I'd say you want between like 700, 800 uh, to feel comfortable. So you really want to wear like an armor energy shield base as soon as possible. And potentially even crafting energy shield on some of your pieces, maybe your body armor or, or a ring or something, just to get enough energy shield for it to feel comfortable. And then eventually you can get a, you can either find or buy a belt with uh, unveiled regen energy shield when a rare or unique is nearby, uh, which helps on, on bosses, especially where you're really spamming. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy the collab with I'm Exile. Such a great content creator, definitely one of the best players in Path of Exile and really good at builds so you know you're getting a good build i hope you guys like these collabs make sure you give him a little love check him out at launch he's going to be streaming all the time and probably by the time you're watching this he might be in maps already in tier 16s who knows it's crazy so go check it out thank you guys so much for watching sub if you like the video but more importantly try to die less than i do